Hello, this is Jessica Pettit, and who do I have the privilege of interviewing today? Hi, and this is Shauna Kabatsnik. Excellent. Thank you so much for being with us. As I have been doing these diversity dividend interviews, people have had all different kinds of levels of experience and interest. And I, when I first met you, I was like, I want you to be on this not podcast. So I'm very <laughs> glad you're here. I'll, I'm going to ask two open ended questions first. And there's no right answer. I just want to know your take on two ideas I've been thinking about. Then we'll go into more about who you are and what you see in your business. And then uh, my two favorite questions. And then the lightning round. Are you ready? I am ready. Fantastic. So the two big ideas that are rolling around. The first one is diversity dividend. The concept of diversity dividend. So I hear about this all the time. And that like what is the profit margin for doing diversity work? So from your perspective, thinking about investment, action, and return, what does diversity dividend mean for you? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Um, what do you gain from diversity? Because a dividend in, in the financial world, a dividend is something you get, right? It's money that comes to you or something you've earned, so if just by putting those two words together, I'm thinking, what, what, is, what is it that you're getting from diversity? How is that producing a dividend? Great. Perfect. The other one that is rolling around is asterisks, other duties assigned. So sometimes this is stuff that you're assumed you're going to do because of one of your own identities, or sometimes this is something you volunteer to do so that you can build community. What does Asterix other duties is assigned? How did that show up for you in your own professional career? What does that mean for you? Okay, now that one's a little bit trickier. <laughs> um, I guess it has to do with, to me, more about the things that I do that people expect from me. Mm -hmm. And... It might be because of the background. It might be because of who I am. It might be just because of whatever's going on in society. But it's more of trying to fit into something and do something because of other people's expectations. Okay, great. When I've had everyone on the inter the, that I wanted to interview, when I've had them fill out a survey monkey. And one of the things that I love about you and your work the most, as you can see, is fab women and the concept of fab women. Talk to me about transitioning into building a diversity and inclusion business, a consulting business, a speaking business, a training business. Why do you feel called to do this? What are you doing? And um, what's your vision for your own contribution to diversity, equity, and inclusion work? It, it's it's kind of fascinating um, because the transition of fab women was just obviously focused on fab and, and allowing women to feel and know that they're fearless, authentic, and bold in claiming that space. Now, because of who I am and my very unique background, diversity is just who I am. It is not, and I've tried to figure this out, but it's not a word. I did not, when I came to the United States when I was 18, um, Catholic, Jewish, American, <laughs> Spanish, the word diversity or inclusion wasn't in my vocabulary, but it is who I am. So by growing fab, what people see is, wow, I like this group, I like this organization because it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. So that's what I heard. And I'm like, well, how else would we do this, right? To me, that's a very natural thing. It is not a I'm checking a box and because I have to be diverse. It's because this is who I am. This is my fabric. Um, and the more I see that, the more excited I get. Now, the preface for everything I do is being authentic and it's being all about building connections. So when I started topics and when you and I spoke and when I started these topics on the art of connecting cross-culturally, what I found was that I was building something on 
the foundation that everybody has something that makes us the same. And if we can find that commonality, then we can translate that and speak of things that makes us different in a more approachable maybe or warmer environment. So what's happened is by me presenting this on the auto connecting cross culturally, I started recognizing that. Mm -hmm. And I started tweaking that and I started going, you know, it, it seems like to be very basic understanding to me, but somehow it's not being translated in the world. People are not getting it that there's a lot of stuff that we have in common. If we find that as our foundation, then we can we can grow from that. And I think that's my message now in, in everything I do. And it obviously grows outside of diversity and inclusion, but it, it's my passion is to be out there and sharing that the, the whole thing starts when you connect with someone. Mm -hmm. it, you connect and then you build from it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just am fascinated and I can't wait to see how it just grows and grows and takes over. So that's great. Are you ready for my two favorite questions? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know me well enough. That's what you should say. So the first one is, is what have you changed your mind about lately? I change my mind every day when things get stressful. And as an entrepreneur, you're like, okay, what, how, this is great. It's working out Then the next day. Oh no, it's not working out. Maybe I should find a job. Oh no, I shouldn't find a job. So it, it's so honestly, it's an internal thing where I'm changing my mind. I know what I want to do, but sometimes it takes a little extra push to say, stay focused. You, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, great. What is something you absolutely know? What is something I absolutely know? I know I'm making a difference. I know I'm impacting I know I'm impacting people's lives. I know through fat women, I'm impacting women's lives. And that is actually one of the motivation to keep me going. That's wonderful. That's super wonderful. Thank you. So the lightning round. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I know. Very exciting. <laughs> so I, you randomly picked three numbers from my icebreaker cards. And there's easy, intermediate, and advanced questions. So the lightning round, first one, number three, what person, living or dead, would you most like to go to lunch with, and what would you talk about? It would be my dad. My dad passed away um, over 20 years ago, and I would talk about, am I where he thought I would be? Is he proud of me? Mm. I'm sure the answer is yes. You know, he did send me to Mississippi State, right? So I have to check in. That's a great story. Um, okay, so then number two is an e also easy number 15 and possibly related to the first one is what is your go-to comfort food when feeling celebratory? Oh, that's super easy. Nutella. Oh, Nutella. Yeah. Nutella. My daughter and I get a thing of Nutella, two spoons, and we talk about it's Nutella time. And yeah do a Nutella thing and we just sit and eat Nutella. Sometimes there's fruit involved. Sometimes it's just straight out of the jar. Nice. <laughs> Number three is deep. If you were asked where and how you learned to love, what would you say? I have to say the first time I saw my son. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the true meaning of love and I, you know, Mothers go through all kinds of stuff, um, but love is when you, you hold something, someone, and you've never met before, and all of a sudden you have all this love show up that you didn't even know you had. And I got to say, holding my son for the first time, that, that this is probably going to embarrass him, I want you to know, but yes, that is the first. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. What a great answer. Well, Jeanne, how would people get in touch with you if they wanted to learn more about Fab Women? Well, if they want to learn more about Fab Women, they can go to fabwomen.me. So fabwomen.me. And I did that on purpose. 
Um, and if they want to learn more about me, they can actually email me at shauna at shaunak.com. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I think this has been a great conversation. And I think it's important to include the voices of people who are just starting to launch and take off. So thank you very much for being here. And I look forward to seeing what you end up doing. <laughs> thank you, Jesse. You've been wonderful. Thank you so much.